Enthalpy is a difficult topic to understand. Potential energy causing kinetic energy or thermal energy. Kilojoules, kilojoules per mole. Delta H, delta HM, delta H reaction. What the heck do all these mean? Right now, I'm going to explain all of this in a quick, short video. Heat. Q equals MC delta T. If you ever hear the word heat, you're going to use this formula. Q equals MC delta T represents the chemical energy causing a change in kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is Q. Q is measured in kilojoules. M is represented by mass. Mass can be in kilograms or grams, and that depends on your heat capacity, which is C. C is your heat capacity. You can find it in page 3 of your data booklet, and it is either in kilojoules per kilogram degree Celsius or joules per gram degree Celsius. So that's where you have to pay attention to the mass. Your delta T is your change in temperature found by going final temperature minus initial temperature. And that guy is measured in degrees Celsius. So heat is always Q equals MC delta T. Reaction enthalpy. Reaction enthalpy is required anytime you have a chemical reaction and you don't know how much energy is given off. So reaction enthalpy is determined by finding the sum of the moles multiplied by the formation enthalpies of all the products minus the sum of the moles multiplied by all the formation enthalpies of the reactants. Okay, if it ends up being a positive number, it's an endothermic reaction, which means the energy becomes a reactant. If it's negative, it's going to be an exothermic reaction and the reaction enthalpy is going to be a product when you put it back in that equation. When you put it back in the equation, it becomes a absolute number. So it becomes a positive no matter what, and you determine whether it's positive or negative dependent on what side of the equations it's actually on. Reaction enthalpy is super duper important, and it's always your first step if you have a chemical reaction. So definitely know this formula. Just a reminder, reaction enthalpy is measured in kilojoules, and you'll put it back into your equation as kilojoules. If you're given a specific quantity of a product or a reactant, and you need to determine the amount of energy released or absorbed by this chemical reaction, determined by that amount, you need to use this formula. The amount of energy in kilojoules is equal to the number of moles or the chemical amount multiplied by the molar enthalpy. Now where the heck do we get this molar enthalpy number? What you're going to do is you're going to turn the reaction enthalpy that you've previously calculated into the molar enthalpy. How you do that is you divide by the coefficient of whatever you're talking about. So if you're talking about photosynthesis and you balance it with one mole of glucose and six moles of carbon dioxide, what you need to do is if you're talking about a specific amount of glucose, you divide that reaction enthalpy by one to get the molar enthalpy. Or if you're talking about carbon dioxide, you divide it by six to get the molar enthalpy of carbon dioxide. And then you plug it back in this equation, converting the number of grams or the number of moles per liter into moles and multiplying it by the molar enthalpy. This will allow you to get the energy released by that specific amount that you've determined. Now if you're given a chemical amount, something like grams or moles or moles per liter, something like that, you need to turn that into moles to use it in this formula. So you're still going to use that molar enthalpy that you've determined by changing the reaction enthalpy into molar enthalpy, but you also need to convert those grams into moles or moles per liter into moles. You need to use moles in this equation to determine the amount. So if I ask you the amount of energy released when a certain amount of glucose is burned, you need to turn that into moles and then use the molar enthalpy to determine the overall enthalpy of the reaction. So if you ever are told about a calorimeter, you're going to use this formula being NHM equals negative MC delta T. Basically what it means is your potential energy released by your chemical reaction is causing the inverse change in heat. So an exothermic reaction causes the temperature to go up, and the inverse of the endothermic reaction, which is a positive, causes the temperature to go down. Now a calorimeter I've explained in a different video, so you can go into depth about that. But any calorimeter question, especially on your diploma, you're going to use NHM equals negative MC delta T 
or enthalpy is equal to heat. These are both in kilojoules on both sides. So we have moles multiplied by the molar enthalpy, which is in kilojoules per mole. And then we have mass, heat capacity, and temperature change, which ends up being kilojoules. You need to make sure that they're the same on both sides. So sometimes a common mistake is kilojoules on one side and joules on the other. So you need to make sure that your units are canceling out on both sides. So there you go. That's enthalpy in a nutshell. Enthalpy is awesome. It's potential energy released by a chemical reaction. It's measured in kilojoules. HM, molar enthalpy, measured in kilojoules per mole. I hope you understand, and I really hope you can make sense of enthalpy because it is kind of a complex subject, and just wait until you get into university chem.